Hello everyone, my name is Mr. Zach and this is Hudson Public Library uh, Preschool Storytime. All right, so uh, just like always, I'm gonna start off with a few book recommendations and I've got those right over here. All right, so this week's theme is nighttime. And I picked that because if you're watching this right when it happens, then uh, December 21st, it is the longest night of the year. So this is the time of year where the night is way longer than any other time and the day is way shorter than any other time of the year. So I thought it'd be a fun one to talk about that. All right, so getting started. When I think of night, I always think of bedtime and sleeping. So our first book is a Bedtime for Bear. And this one is by Bonnie Becker. And this is a really sweet story uh, all about going to bed and, oh man, it's making me sleepy <laughs> just saying that. Um, it is uh, about going to bed and then having a uh, sleepover with your friends who might not be quite as ready for bed as you are. Um, so it's a nice story about friendship too. All right, then next we've got a book specifically about today. If you're watching this on the 21st, you might be watching it later. Uh, this one is called The Shortest Day. And this one's fairly new. We just got it a few months ago. Uh, this is by Susan Cooper. And this is all about um, the uh, winter solstice, which is another name for uh, the 21st. It just is a fancy way of saying that this is the longest night of the year and the shortest day. So if you wanna talk a little bit about what this means, uh, this is a good book for that. It talks about some of the traditions that people have had uh, for the solstice and for Yule, which is a big holiday on this day. All right, so now, I know not a lot of people in Hudson live in uh, <laughs> tall buildings, but uh, if you happen to be watching this from outside, I think this is a fun one for anyone who's lived in a high-rise apartment. Uh, this one is Noisy Night, and that is by Mac Barnett. And this one is just laid out so fun. Um, it starts out on each floor, and then the person says, huh, what's that going on above me? And then it transitions, showing what's going on there on the floor above them. And then that person says, huh, what's going on above me? And it goes up floor by floor. So this is a really cool one. If you've ever lived in an apartment, this one can feel pretty relatable too. All right, and then my last book, this one won the Caldecott Medal. Uh, this is The House in the Night by uh, Susan Marie Swanson. And the pictures in this are just so beautiful. Uh, so this is talking about all of the interesting and pretty things that you see at night when you're going around town. Uh, but uh, woodblock prints in this book, um, just kind of a sketch style, if you can see. Uh, it's just a beautiful book all around. All right, so those are my book recommendations for you. So that is all done with the preschool preview. So now on to the show. Hello, hello to you and you and you. Hello, hello to you and you and you. A big hello, a small hello. A uh, hi, hello, 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 hello to you and you and you. Hello, everyone. Hello again. My name is Zach, if you forgot. So I'm Mr. Zach. This is Hudson Public Library. I always like to say that again, just in case anybody skips the preview and just jumps right into this part. And since this is a recording, you are welcome to watch it however you like. All right, so I always like to get started with a little movement. I always feel better after I move a little. So if you don't know, I've got my magic die. I roll it and it tells us what we're going to do to get a little bit of movement in. So what do we have? Oh yes, this is the best one. So 
I rolled a six, and that means that we are going to dance. All right, so I encourage you, if you're, uh, if the big people in your life, your parents are watching this with you, you can encourage them to dance too. It is always good for everybody to get a little bit of movement in with you. Plus, dancing is so fun to do together. So let's jump up here. And you can feel silly when you dance if you do, especially because I know you're all watching me looking silly, but that's okay. It is fine to look silly sometimes. All right, so you can dance however you want to. I'm gonna bring back some moves that are probably older than even your parents are. <laughs> so just dance however you want to. Let's do this for just a couple more seconds. You don't have to be a great dancer. Dancing is just fun. All right, get some more of your wiggles out. All right, there we go. How you feeling? All right, I'm gonna grab a drink of water here. All righty. So now let's do a little finger play. All right, this one is called Little Bunny. So if you haven't seen one of these before, they're a short little story but they've got actions with them. So I'm gonna do them and then you can watch how I do them and then we'll do them a couple times after that. I'm gonna start really slow at first. You ready? Okay. <clears throat> there was a little bunny who lived in the wood. He wiggled his ears as a good bunny should. So wiggle your ears. All right. He hopped by a squirrel. So make your little bunny and have him hop. And then you can put up your other arm, have a little backdrop there. He wiggled by a tree. He hopped by a duck. And he wiggled by me. All righty. Did you get that? Let's do it a couple times again. All right. There was a little bunny who lived in the wood. He wiggled his ears as a good bunny should. He hopped by a squirrel. He wiggled by a tree. He hopped by a duck and he wiggled at me. Are you ready? All right, let's do it one more time. There was a little bunny who lived in the wood. He wiggled his ears as a, ooh, <laughs> as a good bunny should. He hopped by a squirrel. He wiggled by a tree. He hopped by a duck and he wiggled by me. All right, let's do that one more time since I knocked my glasses off. All right, you ready? There was a little bunny who lived in the wood. He wiggled his ears as a good bunny should. He hopped by a squirrel. He wiggled by a tree. He hopped by a duck and he wiggled by me. All righty. That's it, those are fairly short. So if you wanted to do that again, you can always uh, rewind the video too. That's the nice thing about having these online. All right, so now I've got a story for you and I changed it up just a little bit so I could use the puppets that I've got. So uh, this one is an old story uh, called The Man Who Never Lied. And I'm gonna change it up so it can be the cat who never lied. So here's my cat right here. Do you have any pets at home? So I actually have a black cat at home looks a lot like this one. Yeah? All right. All right, so <laughs> I know I'm being silly. Let's get started. Once upon a time, there was a cat who was known throughout the land to never lie. You ever lie? Nope. Hmm. So that cat always told the truth and they were well known throughout the whole land to never tell a lie and to always tell the truth. Well, there was a crafty, give him the next person here. They weren't ready for their lines. All right, there was a crafty dragon and the dragon was the most powerful animal in the whole of the land. They were like a king tree. See, they almost look like they've got a crown too. And the dragon said to themselves, 
Hmm. Now, I've heard tales of this cat never telling a lie, only the truth. Well, I, being pretty clever myself, have a test. I think I'll be able to trick this cat into telling a lie. All right, so the dragon one day finds the cat out in a field wandering about, and the dragon says, oh cat, I've heard that you never tell a lie. You always tell the truth. So you are the one I can trust with a special mission. And the cat says, sure, I would love to help. And the dragon says, okay, so I have a message for you. I want you to tell my friend the fish something for me. I plan to visit my friend fish and I want fish to prepare a special banquet for us. So prepare the meal as well as they can. So banquet, if you don't know, that's a really big and special meal. All right, so the dragon says, have fish prepare a banquet. Tell fish I will be coming there tomorrow. And the cat says, okay. So I will deliver a message to fish. So the cat wanders off to where he knows fish is, and the dragon laughs to himself and says, ha, 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 ha. So that cat, ha, ha, that cat thinks that they will be giving a message to fish that I'm going to be there. But really, I've tricked them. So I'm not going to come for lunch with my friend fish at all. So it sounds like the dragon didn't tell the truth there. The dragon is lying. And so the dragon says, when the cat tells fish that I will be there for lunch tomorrow, he will have told a lie because I will not be coming there. And so the dragon wanders off and decides not to go over to the fish after all. All right, so... It seems like the dragon is trying to trick the cat into telling a lie. Let's see if he's able to win the day here. Do you think that the cat is going to tell a lie? Or do you think he'll be able to tell the truth again? Let's find out. All right, so Fish is swimming in his home, the river. And all of a sudden, a cat comes up. And yes, I know this is a very large fish. He's a very special fish. That's why he's friends with dragons. So Cat comes to Fish and says, I have a message from the great dragon. And Fish says, oh, tell me your message. And so Cat says, dragon may or may not be coming for lunch tomorrow. You might want to prepare a feast for him or a banquet. Remember, that's a big meal. You might want to make a big meal for dragon. He might be coming tomorrow. And Fish says, I'm confused. Is the king coming or, or is the uh, great dragon coming or not? And the cat says, I cannot tell such things. All I know is that when I left the dragon, he made no move either to come here or to go away. And so the cat, having given his message, walked away. So what do you think happens? Yep. So just like the dragon said to himself, the fish waited there and the dragon didn't come. So the dragon never came and never had that lunch with fish, which seems like kind of a mean thing to do to fish to me. What do you think, fish? Yeah, the fish would have liked having lunch with the dragon. But because the cat never told the fish, that the dragon was going to be coming. In fact, they didn't lie. All right, what do you think about that story? I think that's an interesting one. What do you think it's trying to tell you? What do you think about the different characters? Do you like the cat because he doesn't lie? Do you think the cat was being honest? So they were telling the truth, but were they being honest? Were they giving a message like they wanted? And what do you think about the dragon? And how do you think Fish feels through all this? I always think it's fun to ask questions about the types of stories that they tell. All right, so 
that is it for that. And then let's get one more movement in here. Let's see what we've got. All right, this is another good one. I rolled a five and that means that we are running in place. All right, so you're gonna jump up again. And remember big people that are watching this with the little ones, you can always feel free to join in if you like. And if you can't run, do something else. You can move your arms. All right, so you're gonna get up and then you're gonna start, just like if you're running somewhere, you're gonna do that but you're not gonna actually go anywhere. You're just gonna move your arms and legs. Now be careful not to hit anybody if they're around you. All right, so we're gonna do this for a little bit. See if you can bring your knees up high. If you can't get them that high, that's fine. That's kind of hard to do. So just move your arms and move your legs. You're gonna run in place just like this. Let's go a few more seconds. All right. We'll get a little more movement in here and there you go. Oh, how does that feel? I always think that that is great to get a little bit of movement in. So now our time here is done. So remember that if you're watching this on the 21st, this is the longest night of the year. So anytime after this, you're just going to get a little bit more daylight coming in. So I think that's good to know. If you like the night, then this is a great time of year. But if you don't, if you like the nice sun, don't worry, we're going to see more of it coming up. All right, so thank you everyone so much for joining me. My name is Zach. This is Hudson Public Library, and this has been Preschool Storytime. So I hope that you will join me again next week, and I will give your day back to you. Thank you. Bye.